Well, it's that time of year again, time for state testing. The part of the year that we all dread because we have to take time out of having fun and teaching our students the standards to have them take these tests that encompass everything they've learned in the year or in some states in the last three years. But it doesn't have to be as daunting as you think. In fact, test prep doesn't have to be about trying to shove in as much knowledge as you can in the last two weeks for the students to try and learn all the topics and all the concepts. No, all they need to do is learn science skills. I'm gonna take you through how to actually help your students prepare for a state science test, especially one for the NGSS. I'm Christy. I've been teaching middle school science for over 24 years, and I love helping teachers empower their students with the skills they need to take ownership of their learning. And if you find this video helpful, go ahead, share it with your colleagues, let other teachers learn the tips so they can also get the help and support they need. And don't forget to hit the subscribe button for other videos just like this. All right, let's go ahead and get started. So when preparing your students for taking their state test, there's a few things that you'll wanna focus on to prepare them and get them ready. First, helping students identify the key details and the passages they'll be reading, even if the passages are short with just a few sentences. Usually the test makers are giving them a lot of information that will be useful in their answering of the question. Also, helping students analyze data tables and graphs and look for patterns. Many times, all they need to do is be able to analyze and interpret those data tables and graphs, and they don't even need to know any background information about the topic in order to answer the questions. Helping students answer short answer questions using the CER format, where they're gonna be stating a claim, which is the answer to the question, and then backing it up with the evidence, and that evidence should come from the information that is provided for them. Then they can get into the reasoning. If they know that background information, they can talk about the reasoning of why that evidence is supporting that claim. But at least if they have the claim and evidence, they can get partial credit. Lastly, helping students realize that they will be able to answer most of the questions without having that background knowledge of the topic really does boost their self-esteem and helps them to realize that even though with the last few years being as they were, they might not know all of the topics and all the standards. However, they will be able to answer a majority, if not most of the questions just by using some skills of identifying key details, analyzing and interpreting the data tables and graphs, looking at the diagrams, and then using that information to give their answer. So here's an example of the type of question that they might see. And the first thing you wanna train your students to do is to have the students practice underlining or highlighting the key details that are given in the passage. Usually on a state test, there are gonna be tools that will allow them to underline or highlight, and you wanna have them practice using those tools to identify what are they already giving you. What are the test people, the test makers, what information are they giving the students that they feel are, is really useful and is gonna help them? For example, in this one, how the height of the hole affects the total number of revolutions, understanding that there's gonna be four aluminum cans for eight trials, that they're gonna vary the location of where the two holes will be punched on each can, that the aluminum can is gonna be filled halfway with water for four trials and complete with water for four trials. That would be some key information from the passage. Step two, if there's a data table, have them analyze the data and look for patterns. And since the question talks about which one is gonna be rotating the most, have them identify that one. 
So here they can look for the pattern. They can see that the rotation increases as the hole is closer to the bottom. They can also see that the rotation increases as you go from half filled to all filled. Once they have looked at that information from the passage, they have analyzed the data table, then you can ask them, okay, do you need to have previous knowledge of this topic to answer the question? Have them start figuring out whether or not having background information is going to be necessary. And in this question, no, they don't have to have any background knowledge of this topic in order to answer this question because everything that is needed is provided for them. Finally, you're going to have the students use the information from the passage and the data table to actually answer the question. And here the answer should be B, which says punching holes at the bottom of the can side and fill in the can completely with water, maximize the total number of revolutions. After you identify the correct answer and congratulate the students for taking the information from the passage and the data table and looking at the patterns and answering the question correctly, because most of your students will be able to do that then, you can then go through and have the students figure out why the other ones would be incorrect. What is the problem with the other three statements? Here's another example question. Again, the first thing you're going to do is have the students practice underlining and highlighting key details that are given in the passage. So in this case, the key details are talking about how they are going to be using kinetic energy of moving objects and that they're impacting by doubling its mass or doubling its speed. So that's the focus. They want to look at how the mass is doubled, how the speed is doubled, and how kinetic energy is impacted by that. Then again, there's graphs here. So have the students interpret the graphs and look for patterns. Now, hopefully throughout the year, you've been having the students identify graphs. And if you haven't, I highly recommend you going through and from the beginning, anytime that they can look at graphs, anytime they can create graphs, you'll want to have them focus on that. For example, as they are looking at the mass, they can see that the kinetic energy of the mass have a directly proportional relationship. That means that if one goes up, so does the other. Now, if they don't know that word, they can just say as kinetic energy increased, mass increased. They can also see that as mass doubles, because that's what they're focusing on, right? So as mass doubles, the kinetic energy also doubled. On the other graph, again, they can see that kinetic energy and speed are directly proportional because as one increases, so does the other. However, when you're looking at doubling, they can see as speed doubles, the kinetic energy actually quadrupled. So it actually moved at a faster rate. Then step three, have them determine again if they need previous knowledge of this topic. Do they have to actually know what kinetic energy is, in other words, what mass is or what speed is in order to answer this question? And the students will realize that once again, they do not have to have previous knowledge. They don't have to have any background knowledge because everything they need to know is provided for them in the passage and also in the graphs. They just have to know how to pull that information out. Step four, have them then use the information they pulled from the passages and the graph to answer the question. So in this case, it's asking them to select all that apply. So if you have students that only select one, you might have them go back and say, okay, is there only one answer or are there multiple answers, right? So here we talk about the kinetic energy increases fourfold. Well, fourfold would be quadrupled. And the other one, kinetic energy increases equally for the same change in mass or speed. And again, that was directly proportional. It doubled also, one doubled, so did the other. So that would be equally. You can then have them look at why A and D were not correct. Here is yet another one. This one though is going to have them actually write a short answer. So I want to show this one also because this one you're doing the same thing. 
You're first gonna have the students underline or highlight what the question is asking them to do. Asking them to do, you're also having them highlight anything else. So here, they're gonna be using evidence from the table. They have to have a written argument to support the following idea that mass affects the gravitational force of objects. So that's what they're trying to prove, that you're using evidence to prove that. Step two, there is a data table. So with a data table, you're gonna to want to have them practice analyzing and finding patterns in that data table. And we're talking about mass and gravity. So have them go down and check that mass. They can see that as the mass increased, even though the mass increase is, is different, for example, Mercury is the smallest and Venus is not the second smallest, it's Mars. So you can talk about how maybe they want to, um, if they're allowed scratch paper, to reorder it so they can put the planets in order from um, lowest mass to highest mass and then put the gravity associated with it. But they can see that as the mass is increasing, that the gravity is also increasing. You can all then look at the diameter too, because remember we're just analyzing and interpreting the whole entire thing. As the diameter increased, the gravity increased. Then you can ask them, how many sentences should they have to answer the question? Because many times students think a short answer is only one sentence long. And if they have one sentence, they're not gonna be providing all the information they need. So I try and train my students that a short answer, a written argument is at least three sentences long. And that on any test, whether it's an English test, a math test, a science test, a social studies test, if it's asking for an explanation, if it's asking for the why, if it's asking for you to provide evidence that it's wanting at least three to five sentences, that one sentence is not gonna cut it. So talk about how if they had one sentence, they would just be providing part of their answer. Two sentences, they might get partial credit. Three sentences really show that they know the information and they're using the evidence from the table. Then have them answer the question. And this is where when they're answering the question, I like to go around and I like to pull out some students' answers and I cover their names and we go over why one student might get partial credit and why another student might get full credit and what the difference is. I like to have the students compare them and say, you know, what, which one is better, which one actually answers the question, which one actually provides evidence from the data table because they're gonna wanna use evidence from the data table and since there's numbers in science, again, we always like numbers, so train your students that instead of just saying as mass increased, the diameter or the gravity increased, you're gonna wanna have them say, for example, mercury has a mass of 0 0.33 and a gravity of 3.7, while Earth has a mass of 5.97 and a gravity of 9.8, and finally, Saturn has a gravity or a mass of 568 and a gravity 9.0. So showing how as the mass actually increased, the gravity increased. So not only are they saying their pattern, but they're supporting the pattern with actual information from the data table. So again, if they're saying evidence, they want the actual numbers. And usually on the state test, they're getting points of zero, one, and two. So you can have them try and compare their answers to what is appropriate. And you know, they would get one point if they just say that the mass increased and the gravity increased, that'd be one point. Two points would be actually providing the numbers from the data table. So once again, to help students prepare for those state tests, especially for the NGSS, where most of it is based on science skills, you just need to focus on four key things. Helping students identify the key details and passages and getting them used to marking the text on that. Helping students analyze data tables and graphs and look for patterns. Help the students answer short answer questions using the CER, Claim Evidence Reasoning Format, and explain that the evidence should come from the information provided, and if there's numbers, making sure they put those numbers in. And lastly, helping students realize that they will be able to answer most of the questions without having background knowledge 
of the topic. And that is the most important thing. You want them to go into the test confident that no matter what they face, no matter what question comes up, most of the time, if there's a graph, if there's a data table, if there's a diagram, all the information they need to answer the question is going to be there for them. It's going to be provided for them. All they need to do is take their time and pull that information out. You see, the test people, the test creators really do want our students to do well. They want them to be able to pass this test and they are giving them little hints and little treats along the way to help them do that. So you can tell them that the test takers are on their side. They're giving them what they need and it's their job to pull that information out and say, thank you test takers, thank you for providing that. So that's how you can help your students with test take strategies. Again, if you find this video helpful, go ahead and share it with your other teacher friends so they can also benefit from these tips. And don't forget to hit that subscribe button to make sure you get other videos just like this. Have a wonderful day. Thank you for watching another Adventures in iSTEM and Beyond video. Don't forget to subscribe and turn on notifications for more Adventures in iSTEM and Beyond videos. For more ideas on how to incorporate science, technology, and skills for life into your classroom, go to adventuresinistem.com.